What's up everybody, once again my name is Matt and welcome back to Let's Play Super Mario Galaxy. In the last episode we took on the boss galaxy of the Terrace and unlocked the Fountain Dome. And in this episode we're going to jump right into things by exploring this new galaxy, Space Junk Galaxy. Let's go. Alright, what do we got here? Pull Star Path. And of course, judging by the name and the look of the level, it looks like we're going to be using pole stars quite a bit. And this is going to be more of a advanced, I guess, introduction to pole stars. Yes, we were introdu introduced to them before, but that was just a very basic introduction. This is going to serve as more of a uh, advanced thing to show you how they work, sort of with momentum and other things like that. So, of course, how they work with momentum is pretty much how you would expect them to, I guess. Um, the further you are away from them, I guess, the more they pull you, the more speed you gather, the further you'll, um, you know, get launched after you let go of the star. And I just want to just wanna point out right now, the music in this galaxy is phenomenal, and I love it to death. I mean, this whole game has a very, a very good score, I guess you could say, but there are just certain tracks that are just... They, just, they stand out uh, as some of the better tracks in this game, and, and this is one of them. It's just... Oh, it's a very beautiful score to listen to, I would say. So, if, if you're interested, I guess you could check it out. It, trust me, it'll be worth your time to listen to. It's, just, it's so calming. It, it really is one of the best tracks in this game, in my opinion. But we do have these five star chips we need to gather, and we need to avoid these giant spike balls. For whatever reason, I seem to always hit at least one of them, but I'm not doing it now. I guess I have, like, the opposite of the Let's Play curse when playing this game. Because everything bad that normally happens to me when I practice doesn't seem to happen to me when I record. And I'm not trying to jinx myself at all, because trust me, if that can happen through the entire project, I will be more than happy. <laughs> but anyways, this spaceship might actually look a little bit familiar to you guys, because I believe this is actually the spaceship that they show at the end of Pikmin 2. Now, I might be wrong on that, and it could be Pikmin 1. Forgive me if I'm wrong on that, I don't actually know Pikmin that well, because, well... Pikmin isn't exactly my forte. I mean, I've played both the games, but I just can't get into them. They're not exactly my favorite game, um, which is really weird because I actually do like real-time strategy games, and I guess you could classify Pikmin as that, but it's just, I don't know, it's, it's not my style, I guess. I just don't like it too much. But continuing through here, you can make note of how you can skip a few of these pull stars. I think I went through all of them. I wasn't really paying attention. I was kind of just going through the level, but you can skip a few of those just to get through the level a little bit faster. And you're going to want to make note of that because later on in the game is going to make you actually run through levels a little bit faster just to get some power stars. And hopefully I'll be able to show off what exactly I'm talking about later on. But anyways, after we rescue that Toads, check it out. It is the Toad Brigade. And you know what? I don't even mind rescuing the Toad Brigade. I like them a lot. They are probably some of my favorite characters in this game. They're not annoying. Like... In other Mario games, the Toads were really annoying and no one liked them, but the Toad Brigade is probably the only exception to that rule. I love the Toad Brigade, and perhaps maybe the Toads in the Paper Mario games are not that bad, I guess. But still, the Toads in uh, Mario Galaxy, they're alright with me. And over here, we need to collect five, uh, the, five of these little silver stars to form ourselves a nice little gold power star. And it's kind of annoying, just because I don't really like this level, and, well... For those of you who know me and have watched my other Let's Plays like Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, you probably know what my gripe is with this portion of the level already, and it's the fact that it's a platforming segment, and the only difficult portion of this platforming segment is the fact that we're above a giant pit of death. So, like, if you make a tiny, tiny mistake, you pretty much lose, and that kind of annoys me. I mean, as a platformer, I guess, yes, falling to your death should be technically one of the challenging things about it, especially in a 3D platforming, but you could have put some enemies on here or something else to make it a little bit more challenging. I just hate the fact that falling to your death is probably one of, like, the cheapest ways that you can die in a platformer. And look at that. The developers are so mean that right even after you collect all those five silver stars over these, like, freaking perilous platforms of doom, they don't even give it to you right away. You need to go all the way back to the beginning just to get it. Now, granted, that's not that hard because once you get over here, it's just a straight shot. But, I mean, they didn't even have the courtesy to just give it to us. Anyways, enough complaining. Let's just grab our power star. And there we go, our 12th star. Oh look, and we discovered a new galaxy. Sweet. 
So that is the third galaxy in the fountain out of five. There are galaxies, or there are certain domes that only have four galaxies in them, but we'll learn more about those later, so don't worry about them now. For now, let's just head back to Space Junk Galaxy, and I apologize for complaining about that. I try not to complain too much in my Let's Plays, but there are just certain topics that I think that, you know, need to be touched on. Anyways, we have Camilla's airship attack here. And of course, judging by that name, you can probably guess that we are going to have another boss fight. And you know what? I'm okay with the repetitive boss fights in this game because, well, I guess not repetitive boss fights. That's not the right word. The frequent boss fights in this game. I'm okay with that just because they aren't repetitive like in, they are in Mario Sunshine, for example, where they, you know, reuse the same boss over and over and over again. It's, it's one of my biggest gripes with that game. You're going to have to forgive me because I just don't like Mario Sunshine at all. And it's probably one of the worst... Mario 3D platforms, in my opinion. I know some people will disagree with me, and everyone's entitled to their own opinion, so I would please, you know, um, prefer if we don't have sort of a comment war about that. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so, you gotta give them credit for fixing that, uh, that gripe, I guess, in Mario Sunshine by not reusing boss fights and instead just having... I mean, I, I, I much rather prefer the fact that they have a bunch of different easy boss fights rather than a bunch of misused or reused harder boss fights, I guess you could say, because in Mario Sunshine the boss fights were a bit harder, of course that could just been the fact that the game's not as smooth as this game is, but regardless, the boss fights were a bit harder in Mario Sunshine, however they were more repetitive, but anyways we can pick up this Koopa Shell over here and do one of my favorite features in the game probably, is the fact that we can actually use Koopa Shells as weapons. I love that about this game a lot, especially because it's like a throwback to the classic ones where you could pick up Koopa shells in like the 2D Marios and just fling them at other enemies. So I'm glad that they kind of made like a, uh, a throwback to that in this game. It's probably one of the cooler features and we can use these Koopa shells for other things later on, like when we get into underwater levels, you'll see that we can use them to um, swim underwater faster, but we'll get more about that later on once we actually get into those levels. For now, I actually want to show off a little secret in this level. If we, hang on, long jump off this platform and grab onto this pull star. Oh, by the way, you can shake to let go of the uh, pull star's, like, gravitational field, I guess, earlier. Because, I mean, you can wait it out, but it takes a few seconds. So if you shake the Wiimote, you can just instantly get down there. But if you come in here, as you just saw, I collected a bunch of star bits. So it's a nice little secret that not too many people might, or some people might not know about. I'm sure a lot of people know about it. I mean, it's a pretty obvious one. But anyways, over here we get to use this Koopa Shell to take out these enemies shooting the fireballs at us. But, more importantly, what I want to do is actually come over here and check it out. In this chest we have an extra life shroom, so there's an extra 3 units of health before the boss fight. Now, they're pretty much going to do that all the time in the game. They will pretty much always give you an extra life shroom before a boss fight. So, just keep an eye out for where you think you one might be. And chances are there's one there for an extra, you know, 3 units of health. But we are right at the boss already, so let's get started. Alright, we have Camilla right here, and don't worry too much about this boss fight. It is actually pretty easy. When she shoots this green little magic beam, just make sure you spin into it before or after. How did I miss that? or after the shell materializes to pick it up and then throw it back at her. It's a three hit boss fight, it's not too hard. Of course, you know, you do actually need to be able to hit her unlike me. There we go. What's in this coin? What's in this box over here anyways? I actually want to know. Okay, now I don't want to go on top of it, Mario. I just want oh, it's just coins, okay. I'm not going to worry too much about that then. I should actually probably just keep that just in case I actually do get hit. And here we go again. Thanks for the shell. And you can have it back because I don't want it. I want to return on that shell. It was damaged, so I'm returning it to you. Alright, this is a three-hit boss fight. Here's the third and final hit. She's gonna spawn some magic Koopas in on us. It's gonna make things a little bit more hectic, but just avoid the fireballs and you should be fine. Wait till she shoots the green beam again. Grab the shell, and there we go. So long, Camilla. You weren't that hard at all. And unfortunately, we don't actually get to collect that cool little looking star rod, but we do get our power star, so I can't complain. Let's just go ahead and grab it. Sweet, there's our 13th power star. We are getting a lot of stars already. I mean, six episodes in and we already have 13. That's pretty good progress, if I do say so myself. 
It seems that a prankster comet has appeared somewhere. Prankster comets have very strange effects on galaxies. If you want to learn more about these curious comets, ask the Luma who knows about such things. Alright, so this is actually what I was hinting to when we were in the Space Junk Galaxy. Now, remember in a few episodes back when I said that a crown represents that we've gotten all the stars in that galaxy? Well, you'll notice that there's two galaxies in the Terrace that don't actually have crowns on them yet. And there were no other missions that we could select that had stars. Well, that introduces comets. Comets are pretty much the way to see the remaining stars in the galaxy. They change the way that things are done in galaxies. And I guess the best way to explain it is to show it off. So let's head back into the Terrace. And... You'll notice above Good A Galaxy we have a comet, and it's a speedy comet. Now there are a few different types of comets, but we'll get into them as we meet them. So for now, let's just go and introduce the speedy comet. Alright, Dino Piranha Speed Run. Now, the Speedy Comet is probably one of my favorite comets. It doesn't change too much of the actual level design. I don't think it changes it at all, actually, but it does add an interesting twist. We have four minutes to beat this level now. That includes the boss and collecting the star, so let's not waste any time. Let's head back to the bottom of this planet, and let's abuse that sequence-breaking glitch I showed off when we were originally in the Good Egg Galaxy doing this level back in Episode 2, I believe? Yeah, it's been a while since we were here, and did I miss that? I actually did. Wow. <laughs> Let's waste seconds by failing on simple speedrunning tactics. Alright, it sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> but don't worry too much about wasting a little bit of time here because they're very lenient with the amount of time that they give you. Usually, or most of the time, actually, actually all the time, what am I saying, most of the time, they give you more than enough time to beat these galaxies without too much of a problem anyways. Although if you get hit, that could probably slow you down. So don't worry too much about it though. The longest thing that, or the longest thing in these galaxies are probably going to be collecting these star chips right here and then actually doing the boss fight. Now, they are kind of jerks because they don't actually um, stop the timer until you actually collect the star. So you need to make sure that you have enough time to not only beat the boss, but collect the star afterwards. So just, you know, manage your time well. And why are you not going the way that I want you to go? Okay, and I'm going to, all right, there we go. <laughs> Being really weird there, but, oh crap, we only have three minutes left already. We better hurry things up here because I'm wasting a lot of time by not playing this as well, I sh as well as I should. So, let's kill you. I'm not even going to bother with the coin on the underside of this planet because I don't have time for that really. I normally get there with two minutes to spare and I think, uh, you know what, let's just go ahead and take the shortcut I guess. I don't know how much shorter this actually is, but it's worth doing. And don't you dare fall off. Why did I jump into that? No, 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 okay. Careful, Mario. Careful. We got one unit of health left. I need to be careful and we have... 30 seconds to hopefully get to the boss planet so that way I can at least know that I have enough time. Normally I usually finish this with more than a minute to spare but I'm a little bit worried right now that I might not do that. Alright and let's get our last platform. Okay that's not what I wanted to do. Let's waste more time why not? Fail out this level some more why don't you Matt? Come on we're supposed to be showing off how good we are at the game here we're not supposed to be failing. You know what, this is because I said that, that the opposite of the Let's Play curse was happening to me before. This is exactly why this is happening to me now, because this is exactly what I didn't want to happen, and now it's happening. Curse you, Karma! How dare you! Alright, I think this is actually going to take us to the, to the boss, is it not? Hopefully it does. Oh crap, we're already like... Yeah, we're pretty low on time, actually. I usually get here around two minutes. But we're here regardless. We have a minute and 40 seconds to take out this boss. That's actually not too bad. However, I'm going to waste a little bit more time because I don't trust myself and I really want to get this coin. All right, we have a little bit over a minute and 30 seconds to do this boss. Let's see if we can do it. I'm pretty sure we can. It's only a three hit boss. It's not that hard. It's exactly the same as it was when we originally do it. So we should be able to do this with relative ease. And that was going to be... There's our first hit right here. Alright, come on, man. Lucky for us, they do stop the clock during the cutscene, so at least they give us a little bit of leniency there. And hit number two. Alright, now I'm feeling a little bit better. We've only got one more hit on him, and we got a minute and 30 to do it. And there we go. You are done, sir. Yeah, get on my level. That's what I thought. We may have wasted some time in the beginning, but we wasted no time defeating you for the second time and getting our power star. Nice going. Nice going indeed. Alright, yeah, see, like, they don't stop the timer until we actually click the star, so let's make sure we collect that and finish up this level. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 
All right, there's our 14th star. Was a little intense getting that one, but we did it nonetheless. And you know what? I believe that's going to do it for this episode. So once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.